There are multiple ways that you can weather your miniatures. Most of the time, if you are painting armor or anything that is not organic, that stuff tends to get damaged, corroded, chipped, dirty, etc. In this video, we are gonna look at some of these effects, starting with chipping. When any armor gets exposed to damage, the top layer of paint starts chipping off, creating this crackling pattern. For the most part, there are two options that you can do this if you are using acrylics. You either take a sponge or some foam, or you do it by a paintbrush. If you are using a sponge, make sure that the surface is not even by ripping it apart. Then dip it into your desired paint real good and start getting most of the paint out. You don't want to apply too much and this way you have more control. This Space Marine looks real clean right now, but by the end of the video he's gonna be real fucked up. At first I am focused on the most exposed parts of the armor. So for example I imagine that his feet and knees will have the most chipping, since those parts are exposed to the environment all the time. The same goes for the edges. Now if you feel like you don't have enough control with a sponge because it's kinda random, you can do the same thing with your regular brush. Simply take a paint and try to apply little dark dots here and there, but mostly around the edges. Chipping of the armor is not supposed to be spread out evenly, so there is some degree of randomness, but at the same time it's concentrated on those parts that are not covered from the damage. If you are mindful of this, it's not a problem. Also, you can try sketching out some patterns like holes or scratches, but don't make them too big. Now you might be thinking, wait, this cannot be that easy. It is that easy. Okay, so that was a fucking lie. Now I'm gonna say that you need to practice, blah blah, sure. But colors matter. If you are chipping on a really light color, you can go for just one dark color, like dark brown or black. Even in this case, I personally like to outline all the scratches and individual chips, because as the light hits the pattern, there is essentially new edge created, and as such, I highlight it. Like this, you can sketch scratches on a black armor as well. Placing scratches with a black paint or dark brown paint on this armor doesn't really work, because it's black. So you just have to use lighter paint. But I still place some black dots on the edges to make them uneven. Scratches and chipping on other colors usually include both. You are gonna use really light colored chips for surface damage and darker color for deeper damage. Or you can just use one of them, if that's your preference. Additionally, you can create some more interest by applying metallic paint around the edges or to the deepest scratches. This works especially well when the underlying color is dark. If the armor is light, at least apply darker color around it. Another great method for weathering is is using an oil wash. Mix dark brown or black oil paint with a white spirit using a cheap synthetic brush. Now I am gonna apply it all over these two dumpsters. Since these haven't been shaded just yet, oil wash will take care of that. I generally like oil wash for weathering and shading for two main reasons. First one is that you can wipe off any excess wash if you are not happy with it. So theoretically you can achieve a really clean look if you wanna, but in this case we are not gonna wipe off too much of it. You can wipe it off by using a simple paper towel or you can reactivate it with a white spirit and use q-tips, brush or something like this eyeshadow applicator. The great advantage here is that you have plenty of time to adjust it, unlike acrylics. But if you mix in a lot of white spirit, for the love of god, don't wait until the next day, because it might be too late. Oh, and the second reason why I like it is because the shades can be really dark and pronounced. You might want to experiment with the ratio of oil paint and white spirit, but if you are only interested in weathering and not shading, you can actually use no white spirit at all. If you are in for the shading as well, you might consider using more white spirit as well as gloss varnish beforehand, but I talk about this in my shading video. With all that being said, oil wash will get you more of a grimy look, which is okay, but if you want more of a dry and dusty look, let me introduce you to dry pigments. I often use them on my bases to make them more interesting and I stipple them around the feet to create a nice atmospheric effect. Like this miniature belongs to that environment. Which is kinda hard when this guy is holding a pizza. Anyway, don't use your nice brushes for this because it's kinda rough on them. Rather, use some old or cheap synthetic brushes. You can apply these pigments in multiple ways. Either apply them dry for that dusty look or you can mix in some kind of glaze medium thinner or isopropyl alcohol. If you mix in some of those, it behaves more like a grime or mud, which is also great. Like that, you can create actual texture on your miniature without using a texture paint, which might be useful for corrosion, for example. However, if you mix in IPA, apply the mix very carefully so you don't wipe off underlying layers. Small dabs will do the trick. Sometimes I even mix it with pure water and go over metallics to make them rusty. When you are working with these dry pigments, 
Keep in mind that if you don't seal them, you can rub them off if you are not careful. This can be used to your advantage if you want to get rid of the excess, though this is not what you always want. Using a little bit of either aforementioned IPA, thinner or binder will prevent that. There is a huge selection of colors, so if you are looking for corrosion, rust or even oxidation, you will definitely find it. That's it, subscribe if you haven't already and see you in the next one. Bye!